So now that we've finished the Dick's Hall Pike, we're gonna do the positional tests. And you'll notice that the patient is lying at an incline, so this is a 30 degree incline. This is the same position that she would be in for the caloric testing that's gonna come later. So that's why she's in this position. And here we're gonna try to put her head in the center and then we're gonna put her head to the right and to the left. And we may even have to roll her on her side. So we're gonna look to see, can we provoke nystagmus in a specific position? Okay, so I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna put the cover on because this test is also done. The eyes open in the dark. And then her first position in the position test is a supine 30 degrees head center. So she's just gonna be sitting like this. And I'm just gonna use my remote control to start the software. And then the test defaults for 30 seconds. If there isn't any positional nystagmus happening, 30 seconds is a long time. So it's not like it's gonna provoke a little bit later on. So after about 15 seconds in, if I don't see anything, I'm just gonna continue on to the next head position. So now I'm gonna turn her head, so I'm just gonna hit Next, and I'm going to turn her head to the right. Counting down from 30. And then we're going to do the same thing. So now uh, 15 seconds or so in, if I don't see anything, I'm going to stop the test. If I did see nystagmus, I would continue on for that next 15 seconds. She doesn't have any nystagmus in this position, but we're going to kind of pretend as if she did. Okay. And if she did have nystagmus, then we would want to stop this test and open up her head uh, I'm sorry, her body to the right subtest. So, and there we go. So we selected the body to the right. And so now my instructions to her, this is a little awkward for the patient. So you really want to kind of help them through, make them feel comfortable doing this. So what I'm going to ask her to do is to tuck her right arm underneath and she's going to come up on her right leg and her right arm. And then I'll usually hold the head here, not holding her head into position, She's laying down on the side, but I'm kind of here for support just to let her know that I'm here. Remember, she's in the dark and now she's laying on her side. She might even be dizzy, so she might be a little bit disoriented. So I'm just here for moral support, kind of bracing her head for her. And then we'll just let it run its course. It only has five more seconds. And then I'm gonna bring her back to center and then we're gonna go to the left. Okay, so now we're just coming back to the center. I'm gonna let her relax for a second. You okay? All right, and then first thing we're gonna do is roll our head to the left now. So just rolling your head to the left. And then we'll start the test. And again, looking at the screen to see if there's any position evoked nystagmus with her head to the left. I don't see any, so I can go ahead and stop. Again, if there was nystagmus here, I could roll her to the left side like we did to the right side, but since there isn't any nystagmus, we can just be done with the test and bring her back to the center. And now she's finished. So this is an example of an abnormal positional test. And we can see here that when the patient was just supine, so lying in the chair at that 30 degree angle, uh, they didn't have any nystagmus, not any noticeable nystagmus. Then when I roll their head to the right, we see three degrees of nystagmus. So there's some nystagmus there, but it's not real big and it's not significant. And then when I rolled the head to the left, I can see that the nystagmus went all the way up to 16 uh, degrees per second. So this is a really nice uh, definitive test for a left lateral canal BPPV because the nystagmus is in both directions, but stronger when the head is rolled to the left.